All right, um, now think back, and I already mentioned it about you know, 10 minutes ago. You can have a look at your notes from yesterday if you like. What's the thing I do next to start the ball rolling to find out what kind of stationary point it is? Does anyone remember? We had to draw something, do you remember? Say it again, Shema. I needed a, a table of values for the derivative, right? So I need a dy on dx table of values. At the moment, this is our only tool for determining what kind of stationary point it is. So um, here's one I prepared so earlier. Ashan? In this case, can we not just draw the original function and then like, find where the mm -hmm. stationary point is and then to see if it's increasing? OK, so, so are you asking, at this point, can I not just graph it? And then off I go? Yeah, OK. So the short answer is, um, yes, you could graph it. However, part of the reason why you can just graph this question is I've given you a nice, neat, easy thing. And you're like, I know exactly what that looks like, right? I'm only doing that for the purpose of illustration so you don't get caught up in a complicated example. The real reason we ask you to do this is because we give you functions where you can't just graph it. In fact, doing this process is a stepping stone to be able to graph it. Right. So um, yeah, for that reason, I'm going to go into this next half and do it in, in sort of um, algebraic terms. So I was just kind of killing time so you could draw your own table of values here, right? Now if you recall, um, you know where your stationary point is and what you want to do is just test a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right to see what the derivative is doing. Are you going from increasing to decreasing? Are you going from decreasing to increasing or any other combination of those, okay? Now you need to select some values and you generally try and pick ones that number one are nearby and number two are relatively easy to evaluate. Okay, so I'm just going to pick one and three. But depending on the function, you might need to, and we talked about this before, you might need to get closer. You might need to pick numbers like 1.9 and 2.1. Okay, um, we'll go into more detail as you get more complicated functions as to why you would pick these values. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the ones that we've got. So, um, I'll give you a second now. You've got this table of values, and what we're going to do is put 1, 2, and 3. In fact, we don't need to do 2. We already have a value for that. We want to put 1 and 3 into the derivative, not the original function. We're actually evaluating what's dy on dx when x equals 1. What is it when x equals 0? Have you already evaluated? Okay, so I think you put into y equals 2x minus 4, right? That's, sorry, dy on dx equals 2x minus 4. There's our derivative right there. See that? So when you substitute 1 into there, you get 2 minus 4, which is negative 2. Is that okay? Do we regret? And when you put in positive 3, yes, you do in fact get, you get 6 minus 4, which is 2. Okay? Now you may find it helpful underneath where you've done this to sort of write down for yourself, oh, that's a decreasing function. And then it's horizontal, and then it's increasing. So even that tells you what kind of stationary point it is. So what, what are the two points above the one point and two point one? Ah, okay. So I was just highlighting there that when you are, we call this, by the way, I might even write this for you. Um, we call this thing not just a um, a table of values. We also sometimes call it a neighborhood test, which is a very cute name, right? Uh, it is to say we want to look in the nearby area around this stationary point. Now the word nearby or neighborhood, it's relative, yeah? It's like, is, is one unit away, right? Is one unit away from the stationary point, is that close or is it far? And it kind of depends on the function. If I gave you, remember this function I gave you up here, uh, this, this guy over here? Imagine if I gave you one that it still looked like that but was um, squashed, like so, right? If you go one unit, you might be actually really far away from your stationary point, in which case you need to come in closer. So instead of picking um, one and three, you might pick 1.9 and 2.1. They may be, you know, close enough. You might even have to go further than that. 1.99, 2.01. Um, the whole idea is that nearby is relative. Okay, and those are just examples. All right, so, whoopsie daisy, I erased most of my table, which I didn't mean to. So I've got here now enough information to describe what's going on, okay? What I'm looking for is, what is the change in sign, right? Um, what is the change in sign for this one? It's gone from what to what? Negative. negative to positive, right? Negative to positive. So this is negative. Oops, I wrote it in the wrong color. Negative to positive, like so. Okay. Now you can already see from that little kind of um, series of lines that I drew underneath our table of values, you can already see that 
is a minimum turning point. I'm going to write that down the bottom. Minimum turning point. But of course, this is not the only thing that might actually happen. We might actually have the change in sign in reverse direction. Yeah? So if I went from positive to negative, what would that tell us? It's going up, it's flat, it's going down. What's that? That's a maximum. Thank you, Eddie. Maximum. Okay, now there's one last uh, possibility, right? Uh, it might not change sign. It might not change sign. It might go positive, positive, or it might go negative, negative. Okay, what do we call that, by the way? When there's a consistent sign from um, on the left and the right, what do we call that? I gave it a name in that big Venn diagram. A horizontal point of inflection. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? Okay. So these are our um, these are three alternatives. Okay, it's a minimum, or it's a maximum, or it's a horizontal point of inflection. So, um, you can see here, I would say, I would conclude, okay, I've got that two comma negative one. Um, I already said it's, um, it's actually here on the left hand side, it's one of these, because that's actually what happened. So, Saran, you were asking the question earlier, like how would I conclude this? Well, now that I'm completely done, I'm going to say right down the bottom here, therefore, two comma negative one is a minimum turning point. That's my conclusion, um, though it's worth mentioning that frequently my next thing that I'll have to do is graph this. So now I will say, oh, I know what it looks like. I'm going to go to a, a Cartesian plane. I'm going to draw it accordingly. Okay.